Do you ever wonder how you can combine materials with different finishes and looks and get them to work together harmoniously? In today's video, not only will I show you how to make this really pretty leather necklace, but I'll give you lots of design tips so you can combine supplies and materials for a beautiful cohesive look. Hi there, Sandy here. Welcome to another jewelry making video at keepsakecrafts.net. First of all, I need to say thank you to the nice folks at Endless Leather for sending along all of these supplies for me to use in this project. They not only have an amazing array of sizes and shapes and colors and finishes of leather cord, but they also have a lot of really high quality findings to go along with them. So when I asked them for these particular <laughs> supplies, I had an idea in my mind of how they would work together. And when you have your supplies, you may too, but you often don't know until you actually get them in your hands just exactly how they're going to work and what they're going to do. So this is two and a half millimeter braided leather. I have three 20 inch pieces. And I also have two and a half millimeter end caps, which is what we will finish them with. That'll be at the very end. We'll use some two-part epoxy and glue those on to finish it. But first we gotta make our design. I ordered these sliders and these big hole pave beads because what I had a vision of was braided sections, so like you would slide the slider on. And these sliders are eight by three and a half millimeters, so they go over this cord easily. Uh, they would go over three, or even three and a half millimeter, you could probably get two three and a half millimeter cords through here, and they would be a little sm snug. So you can use a variety. On the two and a half, these are going to slide freely. So you want to determine kind of your design limitations. For these large hole beads, it will slide freely over one cord, but if you put it over two cords, then it's snug enough to hold it in place. I picked the pave and the gold because I just thought they went together really well to give a rich look that was a nice contrast to the texture and the finish of the braided leather. And that was kind of the story I wanted to tell with this necklace, was a, a study in contrasts, that the rough braided texture goes really beautifully with the smooth gold and the sparkling crystals. So now that I know I can fit one of these over two and have it stay in place, and I can fit one of these over all three and it will slide around, that kind of informs my design decisions. At this point, I don't want to keep sliding these on and off. I've already done it a few times and I don't want to mar the texture in here. It seems okay. So I'm just gonna kind of lay these out. These I can slide on without marring anything. So I'll slide on one of these. Now this might be nice. In the center, I could put one of these six millimeter jump rings on here and hang a pendant from it. And if we had a few more of these, and this is really, this is how I design. Everybody may have a different way. I know some people will sketch things out. I'm not much of a drawer. I just I don't do it well. Sometimes I'll sketch something, but it's pretty it's always pretty rough. And I really am most inspired by the materials. Oh, so now that's nice. But what if on let me try on this side just for experiment's sake, what if we braid it a little bit? Then put our slider on. And that's kind of cool. So we have them parallel here, or kind of twisting and turning here. And one thing nice about the braided bit is that this isn't going to go past that point, whereas this one could slide all the way to that one. So that's something interesting to think about. Now we have these beads, and we can put it on two. Like I said, I'm going to just not slide them on yet. Those just look so pretty with the gold and the leather. The pink is okay. Let me try the white and the purple. See, I really love that. There's something about the tonalities that just go together very nicely. You know, as much as I like the braiding, I think I prefer the look of the smooth 
and if I have beads in between, I think I prefer them parallel, but the braiding is something to keep in mind. And I could put it on those two, these bottom two, and then put it on these upper two, or have them all on the same line, which is a little bit more of an elegant look, where up here, where it's alternating, is a little bit more quirky and rustic. So now it's time to take a think about what we're going to use for a pendant, because that will be a very important element. It'll kind of be the focal. Here I have a whole box of focal beads. Most of them are from Dollar Bead Box. I just keep them all together. And I have their little tags all paper clipped to the edge of the compartment they're in. That way I can find out what it is if I want to show you what a particular bead is but it doesn't get in the way of me visually just being able to scan everything in the box. So this one is purple, crackled ceramic. Now this one I think would go fine without the crystals because it's got that kind of matte rustic texture. And even though they're both purple, I don't think it goes well at all with the crystals because the crystals have that sparkle and shine which this pendant does not. That's something to keep in mind when you're designing is you need to have elements in common for things to work together. They don't all have to match perfectly. I don't know that I would want to use a pave crystal pendant here, but something with some of the sparkle. So think about the texture that you have. That's why I said this has sort of a matte texture, as does the leather, and that's one reason it works. And the gold is smooth, as is the ceramic. And so those all work. But the three, or four, I guess, together, not so much. Now that's kind of pretty. We have the dark color to go with the dark leather and the gold to go with the gold, but it's a little dinky. If it were bigger, I might go with it. You could even stack them up. So this is really cute. And these are all, these are both from the dollar bead box. Those are cute, but I still don't care for them with the crystals. I, I love that just as it is, but they don't have that sparkle. They have the gold and it works, but they don't really have the sparkle. So I see a number of things in, in here that might work with just the leather. Now that's pretty, but even if I bring in the pinks, um, that's not bad, but they're kind of a different tone. I don't love the way they work together. This is more of a cooler pink, and this is definitely a warm orangey pink. So then I thought, well, okay, sparkle. We're talking about sparkle. So I went in my box of Swarovski crystals and found this. This was also from Dollar Bead Box a while back. It's a, an eight, 18 millimeter Swarovski twisted bead in light rose. Isn't that pretty? And although I was going to do just the purple and the white, once I pulled this in, I thought, yeah, okay, so these pink ones are going to work really nicely. Uh, I, and I think I don't want the pink right here because that just makes your visual triangle like, too small and it doesn't include anything else and it's like well, why even have these so I think I would move that one step removed from the pendant and then the, the decision would be do I have the purple beads in the middle or the clear ones in the middle. I only have three of each, so I don't have enough to do like four crystals or four purples, which would be too much. I think I like them better here. It's just kind of calmer. <laughs> I don't know, something about it. And let's see, if we slide this on a head pin, I have a, a gold plated ball head pin. I don't have a gold plated corrugated bead, but that's okay. And a little daisy spacer. just to give it a little bit more presence. And another daisy spacer. And yeah, I think that is gonna be really pretty. Often it's just a process of elimination that helps you to make your design decisions. You find out what doesn't work, and by looking at that, you can determine what does work. Now this is a 22 gauge wire for this head pin. So it's definitely too fine to leave it just as a simple loop. So I'll make a wrapped loop and I'll show you that uh, real quick. If you want more detail, I'll link to a video where I've gone into detail about uh, making wrapped loops. Use your chain nose pliers and make a bend right at the top of the last bead. 
Grab that with round nose pliers, and I'm going to make my loop pretty small. Wrap it around. You'll only be able to get about that far. Tuck your round nose back in, and you can pull that wire up. I have a nice little loop there. Flat nose pliers are great for holding that loop still because you have so much surface area. And I love my bent chain nose pliers here for wrapping that last little bit of wire around that stem that you first bent. And because I have only a short piece here, I'm going to do it carefully just a little bit at a time. It would have been easier if I'd had a slightly longer head pin. While I'm finishing this up, I just want to send along a huge thank you to those of you who have decided to support me on Patreon. It makes a big difference. Without patron support, I don't know that I would still be making videos on YouTube. Because although I always want to keep these videos free on YouTube, they are not free for me to make. They cost me a lot in time and energy and materials. I love doing it though, and so I'm so thankful that because I have patrons, I have the opportunity to continue this. And don't forget that if you like my videos and you want more, patrons have the opportunity to get up to two bonus tutorials every month. Now we need to just slide on these beads and slide on our sliders. So I think I'll start by popping one of these jump rings onto one of the sliders to hang my pendant. And the reason this pendant works is because it has the sparkle. It has the finish. Even though it isn't pave like the beads, and it doesn't sparkle quite as much, it still is crystal. And so the finishes work well together. I'm really not a big fan of matchy-matchy, like I said, so I, I think I would not like to have a pendant that was this exact pave. But having crystals with crystals, even though they're different sizes and shapes, I think works really well. Now slide your leather cord on. And I think I decided on the white ones and on the lower two. And I think I want to pull these middle ones a little bit up because this is going to be curving. So I actually don't want these to be the exact same length. Well, you could even do that. Ooh. But I don't think I want to. <laughs> I just want them to lie flat as they curve around the neck. Slide on a slide. And now these have a split, so pay attention to that. You will want all of your splits to be on one side and smooth seams to be on the other. Although this is a pretty simple design, there are some details that you want to pay attention to to make it have a good finished look when you're done. And now the pink. Um, I think I am going to put it on the top too. I don't think it matters hugely. It's just kind of a, a subtle difference in the look. Oh, I like that. I like the way it kind of has the negative space here, and then the negative space will be here on this side. And that's just how I design. I'm so visual, I have to see it. I couldn't envision that. I couldn't have thought of that until I actually slid the bead on and looked at it and saw it, and then knew why I would like it or dislike it. And I'm not even sure if I want the purple one, so if I might just stop at that. What do you think? Do we need the purple? I wish I had another clear one. I think I would just do the pink and the, the white. What if, at this point, I did some braiding? Top, bottom, top, bottom, top, bottom. Okay. Maybe not even that much. Like four wraps. Top, bottom, top, bottom. Okay just kind of keeping track of how many I did so I can do the same on the other side. Hmm. 
this one I'm only going to do three. Yeah, I like that better. So if we do this one. Just so that the spacing is a little bit more even. So I just braided, but I basically did three wraps. So I did one, two, three. And then left all of those parallel. And that way the spacing. Yeah, I think I don't even want the purple ones. I mean, I love purple, but we'll use these for a different project. Mm, sparkly. Now the final thing is to trim all your cords so that they're even because remember we have one going around the outside. It's going to be longer than the, the ones going on the inside. So we'll trim all of these. I'll trim this one too just a little because I got a little ragged from handling. I'll use my two-part epoxy. I love my 90-minute two-part epoxy. I've just got the last of my little caps to glue on. I wanted to give you a few tips about using these caps and the two-part epoxy. First of all, I've said it before, I highly recommend that you use a 90-minute, a longer setting epoxy so that you can take your time. Five minutes is just not enough for something like this. You want to be able to take your time and be very careful and do a really neat job. So it's worth waiting the extra time for it to cure. I used one toothpick to mix this up according to the directions and now I'm using a clean toothpick to apply it inside my cap. You don't need to fill it up completely because of course most of the space inside the cap will be filled with your leather. Now I did have a little bit of an issue with this leather because it's braided and the pieces wanted to kind of splay apart. It was very difficult to get them to fit in here because it's a pretty tight fit. What I did was take some hypo cement, which is quite runny, it's not very viscous at all, and I put a couple drops on each of these ends and then I just rolled and twisted and squeezed and compacted. I can trim just that little tiny bit off there but got all of those little overlapping braided bits to be just a little bit tighter and, and glued together and that made gluing these ends on so much easier. Another tip is for these teeny tiny two and a half millimeter ends, hold them in a pair of pliers. Makes it so much easier than fumbling with your fingers. And now we'll just kind of work that on there. And that one actually went on pretty well. If there's a little bit of an end that is still sticking out, you can take a toothpick or an awl and just tuck it in. And now I see some of that extra epoxy is squeezing out, so that's good because I know all of the empty space in there is filled with either leather or epoxy. Now I have a, a wipe and I'm going to take my time and just really make sure my nice gold plated findings are free of any glue. And also that edge of the leather, you can kind of use a fingernail and clean that up if there's any glue there. And there, all of my ends are glued on for a beautiful finish. It's been 90 minutes, so these are cured enough that you can handle them gently. This is by no means ready to wear. You should let it set for whatever your directions say. Mine says 12 hours. I usually like to give them about 24 hours. But we can finish up here now. Right here I have all three ends on one link of chain. I'm not going to put my clasp on this end. I tried it and it's just a little crowded and it just kind of hangs awkwardly. I will use another jump ring to attach my clasp to the jump ring that's corralling all three of those cords and I think that will, yeah, that will hang a bit more nicely. There's my clasp on one end. I don't have any gold plated chains so what I'm going to do is use all of these jump rings that they sent me and you can just make your own chain. Now you don't have to pick them up one at a time. By the way, you can pick up a, one link and add two. That will give you three links together. Pick up another one, 
add one end link of this one and another. And now you have five and keep going like that. Now these can be kind of springy and annoying. So what I suggest you do is pop all three onto a jump ring and close it. <laughs> then open another jump ring, kind of like we did for the clasp and attach your chain to it. Don't forget to look in the description box below for all links to all of the supplies I used. And also you can check out my blog post because I often have things that I thought of after I finished recording the video. Don't forget to look in the little eye up above for other videos that I've made using leather supplies and also that video showing how to make wrap loops and a few other things that you might find useful.